Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. So, just a little slide for the explanation about our meme. So, yes, I love meme, I love stickers. So, if you are very clever, you can have some stickers after the, after the talk, maybe. Uh, so, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm uh, Vincent Coutou. I'm the head of uh, CERT NG, uh, NG, which is a, a French uh, company uh, specialized in energy. I'm also the CEO of MySmartLogan, which do smart cards and Windows authentication stuff. I've done some uh, contribution by uh, making the Pincastle tools. I've done some contribution in Mimikatz uh, and also in the smart card world. Okay. And I'm uh, Benjamin Delpi. Maybe you know me about Mimikatz. Maybe, maybe not, or Kikio. Uh, I work in the French central bank and like some security research, but not related to Mimikatz, about good stuff for good life, of course. Uh, so I want many cats to learn C, even now at these times. So uh, please, I beg your pardon about some bugs you can have inside. So just a little reminder, Mikat is well known about password, clear text password, because everybody loves passwords, especially me. On this talk, we will not speak a, a, a lot about password, maybe about key, this domain controller, and very, and replication, but not really about clear text password. Maybe a few times, but not a lot. So you have seen uh, our little boy, uh, which want to become a domain controller. So uh, we are going to give him some, some badges, uh, each time he had some, some new stuff. So let's start. I think the first badge is the most basic one because it is related to the DC sync history. So let's get into it. Um, maybe you don't know, but uh, at the beginning of Azure ID, uh, there was a possibility to synchronize password. And it was some kind of amazing because, uh, uh, as I know, the only way to retrieve password or hashes was to attack directly the domain controller. So how was uh, Microsoft doing these kind of things? So uh, you have a tool, and uh, it's, it's interesting. Maybe we have to reverse engineer it. So what does this tool uh, do is uh, something very basic. There is some C-sharp code which is doing uh, RPC call. So you have a compiled DLL, it's very complicated, and then it retrieves some data, and you have a, um, a function used to decrypt a, a magic attribute. Then based on this value, it do a chatou and push it to Azure. But uh, this attribute is basically the NTLM hash of the user. So um, we, I designed a quick POC to be able to extract all the uh, NTLM hashes of the Active Directory. So it was in 2014. 15, 14, 14, 15. 14 you, uh, you have the data. And then the next year, I spoke, I spoke with uh, Benjamin saying, oh, maybe we can make some great tool, uh, and we name it DC Sync. Yes. So DC Sync was born a few years ago. It was a standalone tool at the beginning, but very quickly, I have to make some adaptation to include it in Mimikatz. Not because Mimikatz is the best tool I know, because this is my mind, but just because I wanted to be able to use some token impersonation function I had Mimikatz. So when you use Mimikatz with uh, DC Sync, especially on an RDP server, by example, you can stall the token of a domain administrator connected just to be able to make some DC sync without knowing its hash, its uh, Kerberos tickets, or whatever. Impersonation is very huge, is, is very efficient in, in enterprise. But just because before I make the demonstration about DC sync, maybe you can just make me know who use DC sync. Not a lot of hands, but it's even better than in, than in France, so thank you. I'm very happy about that. So for those others that don't know what is this thing, I will make a little demonstration. Or I will try to make a little demonstration. So because this thing is not a tool to make uh, privileged escalations, I'm already domain administrator, so I cheat a little bit, but it's only to explain the, what is this thing. On a, on also I have an helper to make all of my commands because sometimes it's very long, so just pardon me about that. So this is Mimikatz. I'm connected to the domain administrator. So usually, when you want to have the hash of a standard user, you ask the domain controller, you make, uh, you, uh, make a backup of the active directory, you extract the NTDS DIT files, and you dump the database. Depending on the versions of the tools that you use, it can be very long just to dump all the hash. But usually, you want one hash or two hash. The domain administrator, the Kirby TGT to make golden ticket, what you want. But you really don't want all the active directory. You just want, you just want some data. Domain administrator is not always the goal. So on this example, I just want to have the test user's hash. 
And that's all. With one command, I will have the NTLM hash of the user's test. So it's a well-known password. It was a one, two, three, four slash. The tool is a password I have everywhere, even on my stickers. Even it's AES key. And if you have checked the box to keep the password decrypted on the Active Directory, you have the clear text password of the users. So all of that is done with API, with RPC on the network. So it's normal traffic. And it's very efficient. So this is a test user, but of course you can ask more interesting hash. The Kirby TGT, for the person that remember four years ago, I made a talk here with Kip Tokwal about golden tickets, and this is this kind of hash. It can, it, it can be very time saving to have this, uh, this kind of hash. So the, the most important hash is here, and the most AES key, most important key is here in one command. And if you have, want to have a domain controller account, because domain controller accounts are very important and very still on the network, so it's very important for this kind of account. So with this command, I just dump the computer account of the DC. DC is the name of the DC, of course, it's easy for this. And this is the NTLM hash of the DC and the AS key of the DC. But okay, this is only key. So normal pen testers just want to, to crack passwords. So if you want to crack some Kirby TGT, you are very full. If you want to crack some DC password, you are very full. It's a generated password, it's very long. But you can't use this key to make some silver tickets. So just we'll, with this key here, I will create a silver ticket. I will try to make a silver ticket, in fact. Oop. So I just use this little trick. Yeah. With that, I have a fake session. This, this session is not valid at all on the networks. But I will use, let me cut like this. La, 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 la. So, as it is a fake session, this is five error code, access denied to the domain controller to make some DC sync. That's normal, I have no session at these times. But just by using a silver ticket, yes, the command is named golden, but if you have some argument, it creates a silver ticket. I'm lazy, okay? So on this command, I will create a silver ticket that targets the domain controller for the LDAP service, and I will uh, and I will let the domain controller think I am the DC2. This is the second domain controller on this domain, and of course the domain controller is allowed to make some synchronization between domain controller to exchange data, password, what they want. So this command creates a silver ticket from the previously dumped key, and it injects the silver ticket in memory. It doesn't touch the disk. And just after that, if the God demo is with me, of course, I can use this, the previous commands they used previously to dump the key BTGT. So with DC sync, you can extract all the keys that you need to make some impersonation, fake account, silver ticket, golden tickets, even DP API stuff. And it's atomic function on the network, very about one millisecond to have, one millisecond, if you have a lab network, of course, but it's very few milliseconds to have all your data without any warning on the network. I keep all of that, and let's go back to the slide. Benjamin, you were just a domain controller right now, no? Excuse me? You were just a domain controller. Well, not exactly for the <laughs> moment, but I have, I'm nearly a domain controller. Uh, so basically, with DC Sync, we have only a read access. So uh, I think the second batch is to be able to push data into the active directory. So uh, I got an interesting question from Andy. You know, Andy is one of the uh, Blue Note author, and his uh, question was, uh, if we are able to uh, become a domain, uh, a domain admin by resetting a password, are we able to um, reverse the change that we have made? Um, the problem is that we have only, we can only collect the hash using DC sync. We do not have the password, so it seems to be very complicated. So uh, there was a quick solution using an old NT4 API named set NTLM. Yes. So Vincent created a function in, in PowerShell because he, he started to like PowerShell. It's, you, uh, it's, you have the link at the bottom. It, it, it's fashion. PowerShell is very fashion. But uh, I'm a C guy, so I started to re-implement set NTLM, but it was not enough because there is a kind of battle between two, uh, between two of us. So I wanted to make some change NTLM because on the Windows side, set NTLM create an event, an administrator reset your password. Nobody likes that. But a standard user that it changed its own password, it can be okay. 
So I created the function to make change in TLM, but basically at the end it makes exactly the same. You have the control uh, on the hash on the on the on the active directory. But there is a little problems for technical guys because it works uh, as else without any problems. When you push uh, NTLM hash or password with this kind of API, because this is NT4 API, it removes the AES key from the domain controller. So if you have some AES uh, only domain, you will have problems. But in real life, RC4 is enabled and it works as well. No problems with that. We need more, more flexibility, Benjamin. So, uh, because you have DC sync, the idea was to be able to support the DC sync uh, calls that can made a domain controller. So, uh, we need two things. Uh, we need to be able to register or fake DC into uh, the domain, and secondly, we need to trigger the replication. Uh, but uh, we do not need to be a member of the domain controller group. I mean, this is not a requirement. And luckily, every protocol that we are using it is documented and even implemented in, in Samba. So there is uh, nothing magic in here. So the first time for DC Shadow in US, I think. Uh, this time, whoever used DC Shadow in US? Okay. No much ends. <laughs> Whoa. Well, it, it's exactly the same in France, so no, I'm not ashamed about that. So let's go to, less, to more dangerous demonstration. God of the demo. So for this demonstration, we need two Mimikats. We need one Mimikat as a domain administrator, sometimes, just to force the domain controller to make replications. It's not mandatory because you can wait the domain controller to, uh, to initiate the replication for you, but we don't, we only have 50 minutes, so we will use this command to uh, force the replication. But you need another Mimikat that is running on the context of the computer account. It's only an history about Kerberos uh, tickets, okay, but it will work. So, let's go. So, this is the second Mimikat running a system, French system, okay. And it's very interesting because the system has access to the computer uh, account, so it has all these Kerberos tickets. On this one, is the standard domain administrator, administrator, okay. So let's push some basic modification. So, let's go to this domain controller. We have a test account just created for the demonstration. We put in the descriptions, so it's very easy. I go to this one, not this one. A lot of Mimikats. Ooh, too many Mimikats, in fact. We keep this one. Okay, so I go to the computer account and I will create modification to have, to modify, to alter the description of the test user. This is not very dangerous, it is just for the demonstration. So on this side, we have an RPC server listening. It's exactly like a domain controller, in fact. And in the other view, I will ask the domain controller, the DC lab local controller, to initiate the replication. And luckily, we have seen that there is replication. We go back to the test, and this is Hello Vegas in the description. So it's not magic, it's not dangerous. This is a description attribute. Everybody can alter this attribute. We will see just after that we can do. Let's go back to the PC and see what I have in my receipt for you. Okay. And this time, we will just play with a simple user account. Simple user is a little bit more dangerous. Uh, with primary group ID. So the primary group ID is like a group. This user belongs to the standard user groups, in fact, so we know, know why there is that. But we will just alter this user with the same method. So maybe you know exactly what is the value uh, 590, maybe. It's a very dangerous group, you will see. So I create the RPC is listening, we ask for the push. Replication is made with a real domain controller. And if we go back to the simple user, we are lucky. Of course, we are no enterprise admin on this user. This is very interesting because with this method, there is no event log about an admin push this user in the group. So this is nearly invisible on the log.
And of course, when you are finished, we we'll make some uh, some nasty uh, jokes on the network. You can push back the user in the standard user. So nobody knows that your user has been enterprise admin during five minutes or the days as you want. Let's go back to the slides. This was simple navigation. So, so I think you earned just uh, the second badges. This, this little boy had just earned these second badges. It's time to have the third badges. So, and to take a fun with replication. Yes. So, this was basic operations with Mimikatz and DC Shadow. You can make exactly the same with the MMC. You can make exactly the same with the, an, an LDAP editor. That's not magic. But no, you can imagine. It's exactly if we have a database editor of the LDAP. So, you can change the primary group, it's not very magic. You can alter the SID history of the user. Usually it's nearly impossible for an administrator to push this kind of modification without a lot of preparation in the domain. And by example, you can push the hash, the, the password hash that you want to your user. An NTLM hash, an IES key, as you want. You can even push the previous NTLM hash. You can delete previous NTLM hash. You can do what you want. It's exactly like if you have an Excel to the database. So let's go. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it a lot too. <laughs> but I don't have this kind of t-shirt. If somebody have one, I'm very, I'm, I will be very happy. <laughs> but I don't have some hair. So. so let's go back and let's come copy past. Boop, boop, boop. So again, the simple users. The simple user is no going back. I will close, of course. If I am lucky, he's back to the read user. This is not, this is not the, the lucky one, but we want to give him some power. So we prepare this modification. So this is simple user. We modify SID history to the to a SID value. So this is cut, but this is 512. Maybe you know what is this, this read, behind this read. We will see. And of course, we push the modification again. That's all. It's very quick because it's normal API again. So this time, simple users. Uh, primary, primary group is not changed in these times, but we now have the SID history. This SID history means this user is no domain admin. And what is very interesting about SID history, it's like in the golden tickets, if, if I go to the admin the domain in French. The simple user is not in this group. So this user is domain admin without being in the group. You have no log about some, some, some person altering the SID history. You have no log about groups about that. But this user has full power. And you can remove this attribute with a base script for a shell as you want on all this shadow. It will work exactly the same. And now we will play with another one. We will play with the test users. The test users has, again, the password waza12345 uh, slash. This is uh, my usual password. So we will alter this attribute, the test users. We will modify its unicode password for this NTLM hash. It's very interesting because you can push uh, NTLM hash to the user even if you don't know the real passwords. I know this password. It is a demonstration. And because I have coded a lot, we have another attribute, supplemental credentials. This is the attribute where Windows stores the AES key, Kerberos key. So there is even a uh, desk key, AES128, uh, to uh, 256, I think. It's okay. But so with this special command line, I push the previous. AES key of the users. Oh, trust me, okay, it's a demonstration. But for the AES uh, 128, I push the black hat passwords. So I modify the NTLM of the users. I modify the AES 128 key of the users and I let the AES 2000, 2056 key of the users. So this is a big, bigger modification this time, but it's not the bigger one of the demonstration of the, of the talk. So no, let's see. We have synchronized this modification. So because I have not touched the AES 2000, 
56 uh, key of the user, and this is a modern domain. The user is, is able to log on on this normal workstation without any problems because it's by default this kind of encryption. But we have also RC4, NTLM for NTLM, and AES 128 uh, enabled. Let's see that. So maybe you know Kikio or not. This is another tool. It's also a Kiwi, but the animal this time. So by default, it's a tool I use to make some some Kerberos stuff. So by default, if I have, if I ask a Kerberos ticket with the AES, uh, this kind of encryption, with the normal password of the user, you see it's okay. I have the I have the ticket. It's allowed. If I have the bad password, of course, password failed. I'm not allowed. Let's go back. I have my tickets, but of course, I must use the same password to ask a ticket with RC4. No, it failed. Why? It failed because I have changed the password of this user to Vegas. So this is the same user. On one command he has one password, on another command he has another password. Because we have we are a little bit full, let's test this one too. Yes. So this is again test users, but this time with black hat passwords. So this user has three passwords valid at the same time. For backdoor, especially on service account, it can be very useful. <laughs> Don't do this. Never. <laughs> Let's go back to the slide. Yeah, it was magic. <laughs> um, there is a question. Do you need domain admin to run DC Shadow? Uh, the question is here for the first time, but uh, uh, you can use some uh, ECL to to give a normal users the right to perform DC shadow, so it can be hidden very easily. And thanks to uh, Nikhil Mittal for this uh, poor shell script, but uh, you can also use this to uh, uh, to change the SCL and remove some uh, some event logging. So it can be used to to evade some some detection. The little boy just earned a new badge. I think it's, it's time to go to the real good god mode. So uh, we want to create some objects. So what is the difference between one creation and one update? It's very simple. It's just two supplemental attributes named when created and instance tip. There is some, some trick here is that when you are doing this initial push, uh, the data has to respect all the uh, mandatory schema attributes, else the push will will fail. But um, it's quite easy. But what about the deletion? Um, the deletion is a little tricky because uh, you may not know the um, the life cycle of the objects. But basically, when you want to delete an object, you add one attribute which is name is deleted. You move it to a special container and you re rename it. And then you, you follow the replication process and some exploration until the object is deleted. The problem is that with this process, uh, there can be, uh, uh, have traces up to one year after the deletion. So this is a problem. Problem, so, or if you have a blue team, it's cool. Um, but uh, replication is mo it's not perfect, and it may have some problem. Uh, so I quoted uh, some Microsoft documentation about the problem uh, which is happening on cruise ships. So when the cruise ship leave uh, the, the, the domain, there is no replication, and uh, the objects can be removed in one domain, but not in another. So to fix it, there is a, um, a process named lingering, which is comparing objects and be able to remove uh, some object if it's not present in uh, another Active Directory. So the idea number one is to try the um, lingering liquidation. So with DC Shadow, we create a, a fake DC where the object doesn't exist. Then we trigger the lingering on the DC one. And then once the DC one has, doesn't have this object anymore, we use it as a pivot to push the change into the, the other DC of the domains. But there is one small glitch. To avoid any bugs, uh, Microsoft I did a check to, to be sure that the object was uh, created initially. So in practice, that means that if you just created the object now, 
you cannot remove it. You have to wait up to six months. So this is a problem. And so um, let's talk about the uh, dynamic objects. It may not be known, but uh, you can create objects in Active Directory uh, which doesn't follow this life cycle uh, where you put just an expiration date and once the expiration date is reached, the object is deleted. So at the bottom left, you have uh, an LDIF um, um, script which creates some kind of dynamic objects. So that's a good idea. So can we change the object class? So uh, at the left, you see a screenshot uh, that I tried to do, and you, you, you can see that it's not possible to do, but hey, maybe with DC Shadow. Maybe it's possible, but we don't read all the documentation of Microsoft, there is a lot. So it's easier with Mimikat. So I will try this demonstration because really about dealing about creating object, deleting object, dealing, even for me, I'm not, the, I'm, I'm not the active director guy, this is him. So I hope the demo will be okay. I'm the copy path guy, in fact, so. So let's create object. So creating object is very big command line because uh, at the beginning we are, we are not creating the DC shadow to create object like this. So we have to deal with a lot of big, big, big command line. So don't copy that on your domain, it will not work. We have to study a little bit. So let's go back. So on this one, we will create a demo test three account. So we have a demo organization in it. We have demo test two, but we will try to, to work on this on demo test three, which, which doesn't exist. It's a contact, not a user for these times, because user is more difficult, in fact, for the moment. So yes, creating a single contact is all of that. So it will push a lot of modification like this. On the crash, yeah. And this time, we have created an object in the active directory. But we... Oh, I've done the command line. <laughs> this is what bigger. <laughs> we have some complex about that, but uh, okay. So. And when we, 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 when we create object like that in the Active Directory with replication, you don't have any log. So it's a contact, it's a simple one, but just imagine more dangerous object or uh, attribute. You, you forgot to show the creation that. Creation that? Oh, yes. <laughs> For example, it's, uh, it's very interesting because we, we, we created the object with all attributes that we want. So when created, yes, of course, it was created, yes. It's very normal. We, we needed an old object for the next demo, so. We will delete it just after. Yep. So now we will try to delete this object. So up on this one, for replication. So it waits for command to, uh, to make some lingering. And we ask the main controller to make some lingering about this object. Can stop, it's okay. And now, if we are lucky, the subject is deleted. Again, no log. And now, the modification about a dynamic object. Maybe you can show the, that the class is not dynamic at all? Yes, or maybe I will create again this object if I didn't <laughs> delete it. No, it's okay. So, the object class is store person organizational contact. It's a normal object in the Active Directory, but we will alter this object now. So you can find contact, organizational person, top, and dynamic object at the end. Ah. Copy past the issue. So it waits again. We push. It's done. We go back. And now this is object class. We can see this is a dynamic object here, and we have a time to live here. So this object it is two, uh, 320, uh, 26, and now it's 312. So it will decrease, and at the end, the object will be removed automatically. So it's very useful if you create some admin user, some, some part, you want to test with that. For example, I say like that, you do what you want. 
I'm not your boss. I think it's the end of this demonstration. So let's so go back. The minimum time is uh, 15 minutes. You cannot do. You cannot do less. So uh, we won't have a demo for a while. So I wanted to introduce how this little ball got got more badges. So we are st we are starting to play with uh, Active Directory metadata. So why are there application metadata? Um, you know, you may have some in in real life. You may have some problems. For example, you may have an object with different uh, uh, value of a property given the domain controller that you query. Or you may have some problem in the event logs. And, and to debug that, you need to understand uh, if the value is the latest one, who did it change, when it happened, it is very, you, you need to have some info. And when you are calling the Microsoft support to investigate the replication problem, you need to push an lsiss.exe uh, dump. And you know what's inside, of course. <laughs> And if you don't know, please send me the dump at me first, <laughs> please. So uh, metadata can be collected very easily, either using LDAP, you have uh, two attributes, or uh, using a RPC, using a tool named RAP admin. So uh, in the next slides, you see the details that you can collect. So you can collect the who has done the modification because you get the DCNM and then you can get into the logs. Uh, you know what attribute has been modified, you know what uh, kind of value has been added using the version number, you know when did the change happened. So this is, uh, this seems very interesting to rebuild an history. I mean, uh, when you are blue team, you want to understand an attack, and with that, you are able to buy the absence of locks. But you, you see the, the rectangle in, in blue, uh, this is uh, the uh, data that uh, domain controller can control. So with DC shadow, we can change that. But sadly, we don't have time for, for more demo. And it's very dangerous to modify some kind of attribute like that. So. I think we will push a video on Twitter. We, it's working. Um, we can also play with a, with a schema. So to, to, to have another badge. So. Um, you know the schema is used to describe the, um, the attribute of an object or some properties like that. But um, you you have to update it, and, and maybe you may have some replication problems. So you can you can break your um, your DC. And you remember the cross ship. So if you are doing an update in an ID and it's not replicated, you can just break your domain uh, your domain. So uh, to avoid that. There is a, an attribute which is not well known, uh, which is called uh, schema info. And in this, uh, uh, in this attribute, each time a change is done in the schema, uh, this version number is updated. Um, so with DC shadow, we can just put a change without changing this attribute. So this is uh, very powerful to put some backdoors, for example, in the labs attribute to, to access the local admin passwords. Can we detect this shadow? No, of course. Yes, of course, you can detect this shadow. It's easy. <laughs> uh, so uh, there is two key points here. The first one is should workstation or server or anything emit domain control traffic? Uh, the second point is that do you control the DC promotion process? So in short, if I translate it into technical terms, do you monitor the network traffic? Do you monitor the server replication? And of course, do you monitor events on the domain controller? Uh, so to your knowledge, there is a, one page in the Microsoft documentation describing uh, the um, replication events. So we have highlighted in blue the events that need to be collected. You can do it uh, using the network. So this is a capture of the interesting part of DC Shadow. But uh, if you have one RPC call to monitor, which is uh, highly uh, linked to DC Sync or um, DC Shadow activities, this is a DRS get NCC change. Yes, this is the most interesting API because it's used in both DC Sync and DC Shadow. Because if you just promote a computer as a replica, uh, like a domain controller, we should make DC Sync just after. It's for nothing. It's, it's very not very useful. So, just come on, guys. We are in. To, uh, to, uh, 2018, monitor your DC logs. 
It's very easy, and even in mo Windows modern version, there is a lot of very useful information. By default, you have all the events to monitor DC sync or DC shadow just by the event log. So you can use whatever product you want to monitor your log. Even the integrated event uh, event log of Windows, you can make some alert about that. Push it in the CM. It's more easy, really. So because I'm, sometimes I create some stuff to not attack your networks, I created some. It's Plunk rules because I use Plunks, but I have created some some rules just to detect both of that and just to say it's, it's, it comes from this kind of IP. IP. It's in the event log. It's very easy. So you can't say you, you don't have any ways to detect that and you need some billion budgets. No. Uh, I asked myself, I asked myself a question uh, that can we track past compromission? So uh, in my pink castle tools, I made uh, uh, some scanners to be able to track some weird application because uh, there is only one metadata attribute that you cannot control is the local USN one. So my idea was to compare the local USN with the replication that to be able to detect some, some misconception. But that's the bad news when doing some investigation, I discovered that even with true uh, Microsoft domain controller, they are mixing metadata. So. Uh, it's it's working, but not as expected. It's not the perfect indicator, but you can take a look. It can be interesting. So we are near the end of the, of the talk, so we, we can give you some idea to test, because we're French, we love French uh, gourmet, stuff like that. We, we can give you some recipe. So my personal recipe, just for you to test, you can imagine a, a little real scenario. You, you can impersonate the identity of a real DC, so you stole its, its password, its key from the memory, the active directory. And you wait for its reboot because I'm pretty sure you patch your DC, so it will reboot at one moment. And you just impersonate its IP address. You just have a DC shadow waiting on the connection, and you can push whatever data you want with that. You, you don't have to make some replica in the, active, in the Active Directory. It will not leave any trust replica add and uh, uh, also API. So only DC sync get NC change will be uh, useful. But you, you just have to wait for updates, and you will be able to take. Uh, the role of the domain controller with this kind of uh, of behavior. But this is my personal worship. Vincent has one. I have um, one more little complex. Uh, there is a common uh, problem. I mean, uh, when you are presenting domain, admi domain controller as domain admins, the owner of the object is domain admin. But uh, when uh, you have uh, just a, no a normal admin, he creates a server. And then later you decide, you decide as a uh, domain admin to promote it as a domain controller. The owner of the object is still the former admin. So if you can, can use Bluetooth and detect this kind of account, can you exploit it? So I have my recipe just below. Yes. This is our idea, but we will let you test because I'm pretty sure you have a lab on no production environment, of course. So just a demonstration about identifying, uh, to, to identify the owner, the bad owner of a do real domain controller because it happened in real life. This is the last demonstration, okay? After we can eat. So this is an easy one. We, we, we will not show you how to make this kind of attack, just to detect. So you can make it an active directory, but you can use this tool, it's free too. So you can enter, blah, blah, blah. It's very technical, as you've seen, okay? You have to enter to press, not yes. three. I even don't have to make co some copy past, so, okay. <laughs> and at the end, we can see that one domain controller has been where the owner is not the domain admin groups and the admin groups. And you have the information. This is the simple admin, which is not the domain administrator. It's not a domain administrator. He was just admin of the server. He created, he integrated the, the former server in the active directory, but he doesn't promote it. But because of that, because of the past, he will be able to control the domain controller account. He can reset the passwords. He's like a domain control, like a domain admin, even if, it, if he is not a domain admin, just because of the past. He can reset the password, for example. For example, of course. You're very mean. So it's time to get to the conclusion, and uh, there is a short model. But uh, um, the, the main question that you have to ask is, uh, do you want you, you, so you want to detect mimicats? I think it's um, maybe not the question. It's wrong. Um, you have some basic things that you have to do. You have to build a methodology. You have to progress and, 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 and different step until you reach a maturity level and be able to to have some detection, not mimicats, but some detection. So um, 
Do you know at least how much domain you have in your company? Or? How, many, how many domain admin, for example? You know that? There is no much company which can answer this simple question. So, uh, you just as a step one, can you be at the step five before? Um, you are not very enthusiastic to that, so I assume you are not. <laughs> so, you, will, you have no chance to detect Mimikas. So, just before the, the thank you demonstration, please. It's DC Shadow, it's a little bit new. It's in C, it's dangerous. You can break your Active Directory. So don't use it in production environment, use it in lab. Of course, bad guys or uh, government agency will use some other tools that make exactly the same things and maybe more stable than Mimikatz. But when you make some uh, test with that, use it on the test environment, on the, of the test environment, okay? So thank you for your attention. And of course, to try to understand our marvelous French accent, because I know it's, I know it's very easy for all of you to understand that. Okay, so thank you for Infosec uh, community, and maybe for the older one who remembers the previous guys here. This is Cape Duckworth and Chris Campbell. This was my former. I made my first talk about Ag Black Hat on DevCon just after. Thanks to them, and I was in USA just song, uh, thanks to them again. So. This is a gold light of, the, of Pass the Hash on Golden Ticket. They, 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 they created the idea of Golden Ticket before I wrote it. So it was very clever, guys. I like them a lot. I, I miss them. And thank you, Vincent, to invite me to this conference again. <laughs> so maybe you have understood what we try to explain. So maybe you can have some questions and I, we will try to, uh, to answer them. Okay. No questions.